165 horsepower in the kit, folks. What? That's crazy. We are about to stall, and this is our adventures in and around South Africa. Before we begin, why would anybody put 165 horsepower on a kit, folks? Let me tell you. It all started back in April 2019 when we started exploring the backcountry of South Africa. We quickly realized that we need more power. There's no use being able to land in 40 meters if you can't take off in 40 meters. Density altitude is everything in South Africa, especially in summer, where field elevations of around 5,000 feet can quickly become 8,000 feet density altitude or above. Now, with the Rotax 914 Turbo and a single pilot on board, you think that's not a problem, and it isn't. However, we are two on board, fully loaded with fuel and gear, be it fishing and camping gear or just our camera equipment. In this case, you start playing with your life, and we are all about safety. Well, we're collecting firewood, also uh, cleaning up the landing strip a bit to make it safer. So, Carl, how do you get more power? How about the Rotax 915? Let's look into it. The Rotax 915 is a 141 horsepower fuel injected turbocharged engine, so it definitely has power, as you might know from my other YouTube channel. But at around 647,000 Rand or $37,000, it's way above my pay grade. I wonder how we can one up the 915. Hmm. We came across Edge Performance Engines and started talking to Thomas about the different options on how we can turn our 915 into a beast. <laughs> Dare I say, a 915 killer. Edge Performance has a massive amount of services and products they offer, and only some of these include Rotex conversions, Yamaha based Apex engines, big ball kits, and fuel injection kits. For more information, bah, I've added a link in the description to their dealer map. In the end, we went with a big ball upgrade, fuel injectors, and a bigger turbo, costing us around 14,500 euros. The ULS conversion will cost you around 16,500 and a brand new SDI from Edge will cost you around 29,500. A big shout out to Edge Performance for documenting their process. We'll go in depth and behind the scenes of the engine build in part 2. So please consider bah, smashing that subscribe button because it's really you who make these videos possible. And if you ring the little bell icon, you'll be the first to know when the next video is released. What is a monster engine without a prop that can handle everything you throw at it? But before you even think of a prop, you have to define what your mission is. Because using the incorrect prop, you can end up wasting all your newfound power. Our mission is low level backcountry flying, bouncing in and out of short strips and lake beds. Not cruising high above the clouds at 130 knots, especially considering that those 29 inch Alaskans brought our cruise speed all the way down to 93 knots. Keeping static thrust in mind, we talked to Air Mars about the prop options and they recommended the 4 blade 75 inch whirlwind prop for maximum takeoff efficiency. So we definitely sacrificed cruise performance for static thrust because we want to jump into the air on takeoff. Excited to get everything going, we flew the Kit Fox to join our AME in White River to get this party started. How are you? Good in yourself. Good, thanks. Before we could begin taking her apart, we needed to know what she weighed beforehand. The total empty weight ended up being 433.5 kilograms or 955.7 pounds. Which is not bad, I think, considering that it includes the 29 inch Alaskan bush wheels, Extreme Shock main gear, the upgraded T3 tail gear, and autopilot system. 
Why do we want to know the weight beforehand? Because we want to compare that to the end result, specifically because the 915 weighs in at around 185 pounds and the 914 which we have weighs in around 172 pounds, which begs the question, does more horsepower equal more weight? We are also planning on adding a few additional upgrades and we need to modify the cowling. So we want to know how that's going to affect the weight and thus the performance. On the bottom, on the bottom cowl we've built a marker duct which is flush with the cowling which brings fresh air into the air intake and ducts air through here. With that out of the way, John could finally start disassembling the kit folks for shipping to Edge Performance in Norway. With the engine on its way to Norway and the prop to a master, we decided to redo everything firewall forward. Considering this aircraft was built in 2011, it was time to get new wiring done. This does not mean that anything's wrong, but a new engine deserves new wiring and tubing, right? Let's talk specs for a moment. In addition to the difference in weight, we also want to compare the change in raw performance. Like I mentioned, with those 29 inch Alaskans, we went from a 107 knot cruise speed to about 93. These tires are really like parachutes you can land on. Our epic VG installation had no effect on the cruise speed, but brought the stall speed down to around 29 knots with one notch of flaps and power off. I'll poof, link that video in the cards above. And last but not least, with two on board and full fuel, we climbed out around a thousand feet per minute and we are super excited to see what the new engine will do to takeoff and cruise performance. So with the project underway, we are super pumped to transform this kit fox into a 915 and Freedom Fox killer. In part 2, we'll show you how Edge Performance does their magic and turn our engine into a monster. So please ask all your questions in the comments below and we'll gladly answer them either in the comments or one of the next few videos. Please consider subscribing to stay updated and as always, dream big, fly high and live the adventure. See you in part 2.